I would like to hear, you know, your thoughts and opinions on how the customer and the market has changed. Glenn, I'll start with you, and then Jeff, I'll ask you the same question. Um, well, it's interesting. I think, you know, for your example of the supermarket, I like going to the supermarket. It's a place for me that's therapy because I go by myself, and I and I lo- I like to cook, so I like seeing things. And the thought of someone picking the produce. They, they're not as good as me. So that that's just me. But having to wear masks and watching to Jeff's point, this, you know, we, we had to, for a while, we had to wait online. So they only let a certain number of people in. And people are, once you're in there, people are next to each other. They're touching things, putting it back down and you're going. So what is, it was a very mixed message. But I think for from what you're saying is, I think that, a lot of people are, are doing more research online because they can. I think there's going to be a lot of change in businesses. You know, just look at Zoom stock has gone crazy. Um, but all of those shopping things like Instacart or all of these different ones where someone's going to go. I mean, it's it's madness now in, in the supermarkets because probably half of the people who are in there are those shoppers to fulfill your order. So there is a whole new industry coming out of this. Um I think that businesses just have to be prepared for the fact that people are coming out of this unsure physically what they're supposed to do. But I think it's convenience. I think that convenience that you were looking at in terms of shopping, you know, that uh, it's a very cliche, the thing said the Amazon effect, right? Because I can go find whatever, but it is that idea of I, I, I can, on my computer, on my phone, I can short, you know, search, shop, read reviews, make decisions, and then I push a button and two days later, it's on my front porch, or I can go pick it up. And I think retail, you know, for the industry we serve, retail has been long hesitant because of what we were talking about pre-show is this concept of I have to get them in here before I can start my process. That's gone part because they had to pivot to your comment there before they had to pivot because, you know, as Jeff mentioned, I'm in New Jersey, we were locked down. The, you know, for a while there was nothing. Then they went to, you could have your service open. Then they went to, well, if you want to sell a car, it has to be by appointment, which means almost everything had to be done over the phone, online, chat, text, however, DR tool, whatever you want to say. And basically you came to pick up the car. I think uh, I've been writing about it and talking about it. I don't think you can put the genie back in the bottle. I think people are going to say, can we find some medium ground of that where, yeah, I, I want to come in and see the car, but I don't want to spend 15 hours in the dealership to do my stuff. So if I can do, so I think dealers have to allow and focus on that experience on the phone of getting as much as I want to do online and then when I come see Jeff in the showroom, he picks up where I left off and we get this thing done. I think that's what dealers were thinking about. You have progressive dealers that started it. But I think everybody, I think I wrote an article two or three weeks ago, it basically said everybody got pushed in the pool, whether you wanted it to be it or not. So you have people who are drowning. You have people who think they're doing a good job, which they're not. And then you have the other people who are like lapping everybody. So I think that's that's where we're going. And especially for retail, they they want to get to that point of that Instacart concept. Well, I, I think at the core of it, it's, it's that convenience and that productivity that we kind of talked about, right? Like I have an appointment next week for my Nissan Armada. I've been having some transmission issues. Um, you know, I'm losing power right around 1500 RPMs. So when I call the dealership, I'm like, I, I need to make an appointment. I, I need you to slot out some time because this is not just an oil change. I, I need to make sure you got the right tech there and everything. And um, they offered to me as a convenience, they're like, well, would you like us to come pick it up for you? Mm. Well, I was new. I was like, when did you guys start doing that? He goes, well, we, we started to do it recently. And I said, well, how much is it? It goes, it's twenty nine ninety nine, So an extra 30 bucks. So, you know, to your kind of point earlier, Glenn, I'm kind of used to right now paying 
for a little extra convenience and a little extra extra productivity, right? I'll I'll pay for that shopper to go shop for me. I'll pay for that person to deliver my food or so on. So I'm like 30 bucks. All right, sure. That saves me. It's going to save me the hours of having to wait there. Do I really want to wait there in the first place? But yeah, I mean, as an industry, I will have to say, I'll give props to our industry, actually, guys. Um, you know, in the last two months, and for an industry that's not <laughs> used to changing <laughs> or willing to change you know there for the general body of dealers out there i think i've done a pretty phenomenal job actually of kind of stepping up to the plate now the game is actually starting you know so we'll see how it goes but jeff what are your kind of thoughts on how the customer and the market has changed and how that's going to affect our industry well, you know, it's really interesting. I gave a talk to about 100 BMW dealers back in at the end of January. And I, one of the things I talked about was the whole concept or whole issue, the whole challenge, the big challenge of margin compression. And I said, if buying a car is a commodity, there is no solution to margin compression. None. Right. I said, the battle of the retail car business is a battle to decommoditize the car buying process. Right. So if we start with what we know or what we believe, all right, I believe three things about the retail car shopping or purchase experience. Number one, all right, it's complex and it's going to continue to get complex. You know, not is it just complex about the financing, about my trade's worth, am I leasing it or a negative equity and all those things, but it's complex based on the new product coming out. As we see new hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles and all this new technology, new platforms coming together and OEMs merging what we're seeing globally and the pressure internationally to shift the industry, it's going to be complex. You know, which model is the right one for me? Number two, it's going to be experiential. You know, 70% of customers still say the test drive is an important part of the buying process, right? And what is it? 73% say that they'll drive further for a good salesman to help them or saleswoman, salesperson, right? So we know there's an experiential component, all right? And the third thing is it's passionate. I mean, it's personalized. I mean, I, I, I get passionate about the color of my vehicle <laughs> and I'm in the industry. And so because of those things, there's unique opportunity, I think, for dealers to, to really personalize the buying process. Glenn, you're absolutely right. We need to give customers options to do things online. We absolutely do. But then we need to be able to grab our computer and go, hey, I'm just going to shoot you a little virtual walk around video. Matter of fact, in April, there was a sales rep at one of the dealerships in Calgary that sold 21 vehicles in April in the middle of a pandemic. Right. And he did by sending 71 videos to customers, little videos he shot of walk arounds in vehicles. Now, that's someone being innovative. That's somebody trying to personalize and create an experience even online. So I think we have a very unique opportunity. And I, I agree. We were in an industry that has not been a leader online. As a matter of fact, the, all the other retailers and all the other industries have gone ahead and defined what an online experience could or should be like. So we have, we've been reactive and hey, you know, it's a complex purchase. So we have an opportunity, I think, whether it be through an appointment culture, whether it be through how we interact with the customer over the phone and really take a, a good interest in their needs and have a discovery conversation. But we have that opportunity to personalize and set up the right experience for them.